Let's freaking go! LSU fans, I got something really exciting that Mason Taylor shared earlier today. We're going to break that down with the offense, but I want to start with a big talking point that has happened on PHL's live streams that's been happening basically anywhere on social media. Tackling, tackling, tackling. I want you to see here, uh, Blake Baker, this is a very basic tackling drill, and I want you to see how locked in he is right here, okay? Uh, just watching the defense's every single move to fix the tackling issue for LSU, right? So that was Jordan Gilbert, it looks like. That was Ryan Yates right there. So they're just trying to fix what was a, an Achilles heel last year for LSU. Uh, I think a lot of you remember the 30-plus tackling uh, missed tackle performance versus Ole Miss, and that honestly would have cost LSU a playoff slot if the 12-team playoff was this year. Okay, so now, or excuse me, last year, this is Harold Perkins right here going through uh, the tackling drill. This is going to be, you know, very key for him as he gets used to playing uh, this off-ball linebacker role, uh, which is a very different role than what he's played up to this point. And then, of course, you have Major Burns going through it last year. We know how his tackling was. Very inconsistent. You see Corey Raymond right there working on this with all the players, okay? I wanted to go through that before we get to the offense, what Mason Taylor had to say that I found to be unfreaking believably interesting. And also, Garrett Nussmeyer spoke with the media. We'll talk about that if you're watching this on a premiere on tonight's live stream. We're actually going to break down everything he had to say. This is a, a linebacker pairing that a lot of you would like to see actually on the field at some point. The Weeks brothers, right? So, uh, Witt and West working uh, with Blake Baker. And there you see uh, the guy that's been, well, the two guys that have been mostly working with the ones, Harold Perkins and Greg Penn at that group. And hopefully they're expecting to get something um, out of Christian Brathwaite. I will say, Xavier Atkins is a guy to keep an eye out for when he comes in in the fall. And I'm not just saying that because we interviewed him. Huh? 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 Uh, and then we get the DBs. Why not? This is uh, the safeties right here. And that, of course, is Jake Olson, the new safeties coach. Always good uh, to see that. That was Ryan Yates, number 21. And let me confirm, number 22. That is Joel Rogers coming in from West Ascension. There you go. Gotta love it. Boom! I'm looking at you, okay? One way to support us is going to powerhourlsu.com slash shop. There you go. Link is down below. And, yeah, uh, this is very interesting. I know it's just... One simple little jogging drill. They might have got a little bit of a head start before the Jake Flint whistle right here. But take a look who's leading this, Kyron Lacey and Chris Hilton. It's always good when your most experienced leaders are the guys that are winning these types of things. So um, just a small little minor note, okay? Now, I want to talk about the LSU tight ends in particular, but we'll do like we always do during this open uh, form of practice, we will run through the LSU offense. So to start things off, uh, there was no Emory Jones today at practice, and Tyree Adams is your right tackle here. Also, uh, starting for LSU here is Kyle Parker alongside uh, Chris Hilton and Kyron Lacey. Very interesting stuff. Of course, Garrett Nussmeyer running with the ones. And your running back is uh, Josh Williams. Now, you know, your offensive line is still the same. Miles Frazier at right guard, center, DJ Chester, left guard, Gary Dellinger. And your left tackle is Will Campbell. But one thing I will say about Tyree Adams is something that I've said for quite some time. Normally, I want to see a little glimpse of something when you're a true freshman, right? But for Tyree Adams, there really was no way forward for him to show anything last year, right? There was two really good top 10 offensive tackles, and the top backup at both tackles was Lance Hurd, right? And now he's gone. So this is the opportunity for Tyree Adams to step up and be that fill-in tackle if something were to go awry. And 
something else that could happen next season is even if Will Campbell and uh, the, the great Embry Jones remains healthy, what if one of the guards go down? Would they do the same thing that they did last year, which is kick Emory Jones inside and actually put Tyree Adams at right tackle or put Tyree Adams at right guard and keep Emory Jones at right tackle? So Tyree Adams might be a sleeping giant because at offensive tackle, there really is no rotation. There was no way for him uh, to really get a chance to play next year, uh, excuse me, last year. And this is a guy that I am... Uh, I, I've had a pretty good grade on uh, when it comes to him coming out of New Orleans um, as a true freshman. So really excited to see Tyree get some first team reps because they are going to need him because at some point one of your offensive linemen gets dinged up. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it's just physics, right? <laughs> ah, ah, ah. So as you can see, this is just, you know, your typical drill and Garrett Nussmeyer is getting ready to throw what looks to be uh, some RPO variation or whatever, and he hits Kyle Parker right in the chest. So we'll speed this up here. Uh, we were at 0.25 speed. Now we're back to 0.75 speed. Um, there's obviously a lot of talking when it comes to who's running with the ones and so on and so on. Kyle Parker, very interesting a as a player, and I can't wait to see what he does. This is uh, a, a very fun play design right here okay uh, this is one that Lane Kiffin runs better than anyone this is a fake pitch into the boundary and basically you're just flooding this side of the field and one one play you'll see that all three units run is this tight end out and up okay and this is Mason Taylor right here bang Garrett Nussmeyer hits him right in the numbers but in just a second I'm going to show you an interesting way that the backup quarterback, A.J. Swan, actually ran and threw this play. Pull your right guard and right tackle here. Nice little run in for Josh Williams. So now we get to the second unit, and it's A.J. Swan once again taking the second unit reps just for this portion. Okay, got Caleb Jackson going into the flats. Normally you're throwing this, but he decides to go upfield to Aaron Anderson. Uh, you also have uh, Zay Thomas, Zavion number 11 there. And let's break down the second team offensive line. Here's big Ethan Calloway, the four-star uh, coming in from North Carolina. 76 is Christian Stamps. Very interesting offensive guard uh, prospect. Number 78 is Cohen Eccles, another true freshman, getting the first team reps. And then you have a year two guy in Paul Mabenga and... Uh, over here at left tackle is Bo Bordelon. So second team offensive line here. And Caleb Jackson, your second team running back. And you'll see the other second team receivers in just a second. Obviously, the snap right there, not really as accurate as you would like to see. Mac Markway working um, as the second team tight end. You got C.J. Daniels, and then you also have Aaron Anderson. And, of course, there's Davion Thomas right there. So, uh Two newcomers and a year three player in Aaron Anderson who is a year two transfer. Both of these young men from the same recruiting class, okay? So this is, of course, the same play we saw a minute ago, all right? And you have the fake pitch into the – or and this was actually just a fake throw. I don't know if there's supposed to be a pump fake here. Uh, and then you're trying to get the out and up. But notice how A.J. Swan throws his back shoulder. So one of my bigger criticisms of the Denbrock offense was this exact play that uh, we are breaking down, okay? Not this one, but the next one. And I want you to see how the Chiefs actually run this out-and-up action. Now, it's a different out-and-up formation, and the Chiefs right here are in 12 personnel, okay? So keep in mind uh, that here in just a second. So, when they run the out and up, of course, these are the best quarterback tight end duo of all time here. The way I normally see it run successfully is a back shoulder throw. Because the out and up from the tight end, normally the tight end doesn't have the juice to get over the top of a DB. And oftentimes, uh, a DB is going to be just sitting right here. They're not going to be pressing or really biting as hard on the out. And 
you normally have to back shoulder this throw. So I think if we're going to run this play next year, it needs to be back shoulder like this one uh, from Mahomes to Kelsey. And that is an indefensible throw because the DB is really guarding against the over the top right here. And normally they're able to get over the top because it is not as fast of a player. So back shoulder it to a big target. And I think this could work for us next year. Now we're not as good as these two guys, but still. Ah, ah, ah. And now we're running basically the same Josh Williams play, but to the right side, pulling the left guard and the left tackle. Now we get to this third team unit and there is no left guard. So there's only 10 people on the field. Okay. So let's run through this with Ricky Collins at QB. Okay, he starts things off throwing to Kamarion Pimpton. So you notice during this, you know, part of practice, it was a real emphasis on getting the football, you know, to the tight end. So let's break down this third team offensive line. That's Joe Cryer um, right there, number 77. And at right tackle, number 52 is Kobe Roberts. At center is number 75, Brandon Augustus. And at left tackle is number 55, Kari Lee Jr., okay? Uh, who I think is more of a guard, but they have my left tackle here. I think the running back here, this is a walk-on right now. LSU only has two scholarship running backs available. Is number 30, Malachi Lane. Your third team receivers, you got Shelton Sampson up here. Um, you also have Kai Prean. And number 19 is Javen Nichols. So you see the same play run, the out and up, and you throw it to Kamari on Pimpton for a nice little tutty there. We have a lot on our plates, I think, as tight ends, and I think that's a good thing. Um, we've been doing, mixing a few uh, 12 personnel things, trying to trying to see where we stand with that and just trying new things, and I think it's working along good. Um, and like I said, I mean, us tight ends, we're ready for everything. We're versatile, so we like to have a lot of things on our plate, and um, we're up for the challenge. So, so Mason Taylor, the 12 personnel, that is very interesting, especially if you are a PHL regular on our live streams. We've been speculating about LSU doing more of that, and we'll break down what that means right now. But I do want to give a quick thank you. That Travis Kelsey play was actually a clip from our Power Hour NFL channel. We have reached a 1,000 subscribers over there. The fastest I've ever got to 1K on any project. I really appreciate it. So 12 personnel, essentially what that means the first number, whenever you hear blank personnel, is the amount of running backs that are on the field. The second number, that's the amount of tight ends that are on the field. So LSU, over the years, has exclusively run more 11 personnel. So you have a running back, you have a tight end. Even though this is a five-wide set, this is still 11 personnel with three wide receivers, okay? 12 personnel would mean... One of these receivers, let's say Nichols is out and you put Mason Taylor in or just another tight end in. That's what that essentially means. And that personnel grouping is your personnel re grouping regardless of the formation. Now, what's interesting is Joe Sona at Louisiana Tech actually ran a, a good bit of 10 personnel. Uh, I, I believe I'd have to go back and look at that data uh, again, which is four wide receiver sets. But 12 personnel is... Something I am a huge proponent of, right? Those Stetson Bennett, Georgia, Todd Monken offenses with Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington. Now, we don't have tight ends of that caliber, but we do have very good tight ends. Uh, it is amazing how badly they will outgap you in the running game and keep you guessing because of how much versatility two tight end sets give your offense, right? And this man right here, Brian Kelly, has made it a point that he wants his running game to be better. One way you can make your running game better is outnumbering people in the box, and you could do that a lot easier with tight ends. And obviously, those tight ends have to be versatile. They have to be able to block. Uh, that's something that Pimp is going to have to work on. Mac Markway is, for the most part, more of your traditional blocking tight end, but not quite the same level of receiver as Pimpton. So it gets into a very interesting conversation about trade as green. Who's not even here yet. Is that somebody that could be the second tight end in our 12 personnel sets with Mason Taylor? It could be right. He's our highest rated offensive player coming in this last class for a reason. So it's a very interesting debate and comment below who you think the number two tight end should be 
in the 12 personnel sets. I would love to know your thoughts. And if you want deeper breakdowns on what LSU potentially could do out of it, 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 it just let me know. Because for the most part, since 2019 LSU, pretty much every LSU offense is mostly based out of 11. And most, I would say, probably 75 to 80 percent of modern college offenses based out of 11 as well. Uh, I think we still will do that, but if you can run 12, it could be a cheat code uh, for your offense. It really can, but you got to have the dudes. So let me know what you guys think, okay? Live stream starting soon if you're watching this on the premiere. It is! Power, hour, LSU, boom! And don't forget to drop a super thanks tonight. We are doing steaks, baby. Let's go.